here we are. Uh, board number one. In Austria, we have Richard Lowenberg coming to us from New York City. In England, we have Alison Heim coming to us also from uh, New York. She's in Brooklyn. In France, we have Jake Trotta uh, coming to us from Chicago. He is a Windy City weasel, an accomplished Windy City weasel. Germany, we have Riaz Verani coming to us from Vancouver. In Italy, we have Russ Dennis uh, coming to us from Detroit. I don't think that's right. I think he's in the DC area. Uh, that uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll get that we'll one. We'll check on that. that. In Russia, we have Jackson Roberts coming to us from Orange County, California. And in Turkey, we have Saren Kwok coming to us from London. And Siobhan, you have a little bit of background on these players. Um, can you uh, tell us a bit about them? Yeah, of course. Um, Richard Lowenberg, I've never met in person, but he's been on some of these games online. Um, I don't know too much about him or how long he's been playing, but I do know that he's a good player because he is currently tied for fifth in the rankings for Weasel Moot. Um, meanwhile, Allison got into this game within the last year. Um, a friend did introduce it to her about a decade ago, but it took the pandemic for her to really get into it. Um, Jake Trotta is very familiar to all the weasels who are in our audience tonight. He's been playing for a number of years with you guys. Very solid player, um, but primarily has been a face-to-face -face player. So I'm interested to see how this virtual format works out for him. Um, Riaz has been playing for a couple of years, I think. I met him about three years ago up in Vancouver. Um, Great player, has been playing a lot online, gunboat, face-to-face, the usual. Um, moving on, Russ Dennis, um, he heads up the diplomacy briefing. Um, he's also humbled a heap online. So for those of you who are in some of our Discord servers, you may see him under a different name. Um, but he's been playing for over a decade now. And fantastic player, has two best Englands, I believe, this year in the virtual tournaments. Yeah, he won Best England at uh, Dixie and Boston Massacre, and is currently sitting with Best England at this tournament. So okay, he so he could he could tie me. I have three behind me for anyone who's <laughs> counting. Um, Jackson Roberts, unfortunately, I don't know anything about, but you're in California, Jackson. We hope to see you at a future whipping tournament up in the Bay Area very soon. And Saren has made a huge, huge splash this year. She's only been playing for about three months, but is a fantastic player, and everyone seems to know her name now. Yeah, she's been on uh, DBN a couple times now, and uh, she is uh, extremely sharp. And uh, and I've said this before, one of the things that's really fun about her is that she has no uh, problem going for the jugular right from the start of her, uh, of her diplomacy career. A very strong analytical mind and uh, and does not uh, does not feel remorse, <laughs> at least in this context. So it's that's really great. Right. And uh, I, it will not surprise me at all if she qualifies for the uh, for the Invitational. Um, she's definitely uh, definitely gunning for it. And uh, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I should add um, Jake Trot. So uh, I've I've heard from the producer that Russ Dennis is in fact in Detroit. So uh, shame on me for thinking otherwise. Um, Jake Trotta and I entered the Weasels together. Um, we uh, are right around the same time, and we. Uh, had a friendly rivalry for a few years. He sort of took a, a break the past year. But before that, um, yeah, we were kind of neck and neck in the standings every year. And there was one year that came down to uh, to him and I. And I think I edged him by 10 points. And But he had topped more boards than me. So there was a nice argument about who had actually had the better season. And uh, <laughs> he's won he's won our barroom brawl a couple times, uh, which is a sort of side competition we have. And he's also won CodCon before, which is a, uh, a, a what was our minor tournament that we used to have. Hopefully we'll have again someday. All right, enough about that. Um, unless uh, Doug, anything you want to add about these players? This is a this is a good batch of players. Um, you know, Riaz uh, is a very experienced player. He's been playing for a long time, um, and he is a really strong, um, fun guy to play with. Um, he, I would be interested to see if he comes out real fast with an alliance because that's uh, what he likes to start with, and you know. I think Jake won the Weasels in 2015. Did he win the tournament? No, 20... he didn't. No. Okay. Uh, I know I, I've, Jake is a fantastic player, and I'm I'm going to be excited to see that East uh, or that West and how that resolves because that's looks like a good start there. Yeah, it'll be interesting. You've got two very experienced players um, in France and Germany, and an inexperienced, a relatively inexperienced player in England. Um, so a lot of times that turns into like a battle for the newer player. And sometimes the two experienced players just say, uh, you know, let's uh, shake hands and uh, and uh, and move forward together. So, all right, with that, let us have a look here at the board and uh, let's divide up east and west. Uh, Siobhan, we'll let you pick. I'll take the west because we're talking about how interesting that's going to be. All right. 
Great. And uh, Doug, you will get the East. So uh, here we have spring 1901 orders. And Siobhan, tell us what you see in the West. <laughs> All right. Um, so I don't know what kind of conversations happened between England and France, but clearly Jake has convinced Allison that they are good friends and then took advantage of that brutally and just walked right into the channel. You don't often see France getting into the channel in, o in spring of 01. So I'm curious to see where that's going. Is it as we predicted, just France and Germany deciding, hey, sorry, you're really nice, but you are a new player and we want big scores in this tournament. <laughs> yeah, the tournament is on the line. Yeah, I mean, with the top board, it just adds the extra pressure, right? Exactly. All right, Doug, tell us about the East. Well, immediately what struck me, um, I would love to be a fly on the wall for the conversation between Jackson and Sarah, and that led to them not bouncing in the Black Sea, but instead in Armenia. And we know that it is classic weasel uh, habit to open this way from Smyrna to Armenia. So, you know, that's, I think, very interesting. Uh, and I will want to see how that plays out, because we could be seeing an RT forming here right at the very beginning of this game. Which would be fascinating given uh, the strength in F and G. Um, do uh, I, it, it's worth pointing out that Saren and neither Saren nor Jackson is from Chicago. So uh, it doesn't mean that the uh, the Smyrna to Armenia opening hasn't infected them just from <laughs> being affiliated with the moot here. But uh, but neither of them does it by nature. OK, let's move on to fall of 1901. And here we have the orders. And Doug, why don't we stay with you in the East? Tell us what you see. Yeah, uh, I think that's great. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm i looking here and the thing that really is striking to me is there's no conflict between Austria and Russia, even with that bounce. You have the hold in Warsaw um, and you still don't have anyone in the Black Sea. I mean, this looks like a really strong RT or maybe there's a trip, an Eastern triple going on. I'm, I'm not sure exactly. But uh, it, it is very interesting. No bounce in the Black Sea, two turns in a row. Andrew Goff would be very, very disappointed. <laughs> no bounce in the Black Sea, no bounce in Galicia, um, no bounce in Trieste even. So there's, there, you know, you've got these four holds around the East. Um, it's, this is like the friendliest East ever for the first year, eh? Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a situation where, you know, Bulgaria holds it. It's just a, why not make a swing somewhere, right? Somebody might yeah. misorder. Yeah. And even like, you know, sometimes you see it with uh, in cooperation with Russia, like if you know Russia is going to move the two, uh, use the support uh, uh, from the fleet, then why not just go and pretend there's conflict or something like that? Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Uh, what about the West? Siobhan, tell us about that. Uh, so the West, as predicted, we're seeing the sea lion with France and Germany just rolling whether Riaz in Germany was on board in spring. He certainly is now. And oh, Allison, I'm sorry. It's... Losing the North Sea in fall of 01 is never good or easy as England. Tell us, but Siobhan, tell us about the retreat to Skagrak here. The retreat to Skag is really interesting. It causes a lot of headaches for a number of people. Um, the Russian in Sweden has to worry about those two fleets bordering that. Um, the German has to can't pull Denmark back away to use the army anywhere, possibly hoping to have convoyed it across to the continent into England. Um, it just causes a lot of problems. I'm you know, given that her other option, Helgeland wasn't the right one and Norwegian would have been too far away, I think Skag might have been the best choice she had. Doug, what do you think about this? Um, the thing that drew my eye is actually the army to uh, from Kiel to Denmark. Um, you know, obviously that's going to set up for a convoy over to England. But really, it, it, it pins that army there in a disadvantageous, disadvantageous location for Germany. Um, I would have rather kept that just like lurking in Munich. You know, maybe I go east quicker for the long term rather than have my army sitting in Holland and Denmark. The the sea lion, you know, it can be brutal here. And there, you guys must have had uh, ways of counteracting that that you you know have liked in various uh, at various times in the past. Um, what what is your preferred way to respond to a sea lion, Siobhan? Uh, my preferred way is to be one of France or Germany. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's generally I find that as England, when I'm being subjected to a sea lion, is to make it as unproductive for them for as long as possible so yeah. that one of them will flip 
and just say, okay, I'm Germany. I'm not getting anything out of this. I haven't been able to convoy that army from Denmark over to the continent like France promised me I would be able to. Oh, look, France got a daughter too. I'm not sure I'm okay with this balance anymore. Yeah, it seems like you've got a kind of choice. You can either... Um... You can either try to turtle up and stymie both of them as long as possible or pick one and stymie them as long as possible. And uh, that she seems to have chosen that direction uh, in this case. Yeah, I think that you can actually do a little bit of both. I mean, put build another army um, at home so that you have strong defense at home. And then you can simultaneously tell both opponents um, you know, I'm going to make this as miserable to you as possible, and I'm going to drag this out as long as I can, um, and then hope that the East resolves very quickly, and you know, then Germany and France have uh, things they have to do elsewhere to make you come back. And maybe, you, maybe you'll be lucky and get a four-way alliance in the East coming out. <laughs> <laughs> the most Eastern, the Eastern quadruple, the long, uh, the, it's the Bigfoot of diplomacy, isn't it? Um, we have a fleet build from England. Um, we also have France putting down uh, non-surprising builds. I suppose Germany could have made an argument for two fleets, just sort of go all in. But uh, uh, this also seems uh, the wiser choice. And uh, elsewhere, um, actually, a slight surprise from Turkey. A uh, fleet in Constantinople. I, you might have thought a fleet in Smyrna here, given that um, they got the fleet into the Aegean and you might want to try to maximize your forward position here. This is a conservative um, This is a conservative build here. All right, let's push forward here. We uh, took a, little, a lot of time there, indulging in fall of 1901. So, uh, so here are the spring 1902 moves. And let's stay in the West here uh, with Siobhan because there's lots of activity. Yeah, there is a lot of movement here, and I'm trying to make sense of it. Um, Belgium to Irish is entertaining, but I can't help but think that that must be a misorder, and it was intended to convoy to Wales, because it looks mm. like the English Channel is trying to convoy something. It looks like the English Channel actually got the order right. Um, yeah, okay, Belgium was supposed to go to Wales. There was just a misclick there, and that's unfortunate for France, because they would have gotten in. Yep. And without what Doug suggested with the army build for England, that would have been actually quite brutal having to cover Edinburgh and Liverpool with only one army. Um, elsewhere, England gets back into the North Sea. You get a German fleet on the continent. It's not the worst thing in the world, but loses Norway. Germany takes Sweden. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so many arrows. Okay. Yeah, we didn't. I overlooked the uh, fleet North Coast build here uh, from yes. from Russia, which is uh, potentially questionable here. Um, you might, as Russia, think that you're better off, uh, you know, keeping England from from falling too quickly. Um, and, and even if you do want to do that, I would rather have an army there at this point rather than a, a fleet on the North Coast, because I just find that the fleet North Coast build is a very limiting build. And also, I, I this just doesn't seem like a great deal for Russia if um, if they're saying even and simply transferring a dot from England to Germany, you're just sort of potentially creating a monster that uh, uh, that will end up eating you. Um, and then, uh, all right, so Doug, tell us about uh, some of this activity in the East. Well, we, I mean, uh, we got a very interesting alliance structure here with, you know, um, it looks like an art alliance, I guess, uh, Austria, yeah. Russia, Turkey. I've never seen that work for very long, um, but good on you to try. What I see coming next here is um, that Russian fleet getting piffed in the corner. That's what they look like they're doing. And meanwhile, we have Austria shifting against Italy, like driving far that way. Russia's going north with everything. Um, so this is great for Saren. I just want to really say this. She has nobody attacking her, and she's going to have opportunities galore to go forward, just kind of sit back, be patient make your move um but this is a great start for turkey i would say yeah and getting rid of that russian fleet that is valuable is it not yeah all right let's uh confirm that this is what happens and indeed it is except something else happens uh doug why don't we stay with you in the east uh we we've got that explosion it looks like um however they're moving back to constantinople which is interesting to see um and <laughs> Austria did not take Venice um, and didn't make that move there. So maybe the shift is on. And I spoke too soon about Saren's good position because she's pulling one. I, 
I have to say, I, my guess is that this is a bid to um, not have to waste time getting the the fleet out. That yeah. she's going to take Bulgaria next and then rebuild fleet Smyrna. Uh, and this gives Austria some security. Um, yeah, it's, it's probably a swap for the long term for Greece um, as well. And, and if you're this is good play if you guys uh, are able to swap dots and have that level of trust going at this yeah. point. Um, that that makes an alliance very effective and strong and dynamic for the long term. Those are fun games to play. Yeah, this is and presumably we'll see a fleet Trieste here. This is uh, <laughs> this is a really <laughs> special, uh, I think, uh, set of openings here. Uh, Siobhan, tell us about the and, and poor Italy, right? I mean, ultimately, <laughs> yeah, nothing you can do. Yeah. All right, Siobhan, tell us about the West. I mean, if we want to feel sad for someone right now, I'm going to continue that Allison in England clearly has zero friends that surround her. Um, Russia helping to cut the support of the North Sea so that she can't hold London. She covers Liverpool and Edinburgh, but, you know, it's it seems like it's a matter of time. They don't have any armies on the continent yet, though. And it looks like Picardy went to Wales, but nobody convoyed it, which tells me that those three, Russia, France, and Germany, are talking up to the last moment, and someone came and said, no, 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 you need to support me to London instead. This is an awfully, it's, it's interesting, right? Germany's getting two builds here. Um, France mm -hmm. isn't getting any, probably doesn't need it yet. Um, but uh, all right, let's uh, let's call it some builds, and I'm going to ask you guys to tell me who, who you like in this game. Um, and uh, England... Uh, you know, England is with no friends whatsoever. Three, all three coming after her. She really just has to uh, just pick the way that she exits the game. Um, in Germany, we get another fleet and an army. Uh, France puts a fleet. Oh, France picked up uh, Spain, didn't they? So France yeah. does get a build. Mm -hmm. Okay. We get the fleet uh, Trieste, which is always nice this early in the game. Oof. <laughs> Fall Love 1902. Love it. Um, yeah, so maybe this maybe Bulgaria will go away, or they'll flip, they'll do a swap for Greece when Austria gets. Back. This is a really this is I if so if Saren ends up topping this board like this is uh, I think kind of high level uh, Jedi stuff at this stage of the game, um, and then France puts down an uh, Russia puts down an army. Okay, uh, who do you like and why? Start with you, Doug. Well, I really like uh, what Turkey's doing here. I'm, I'm really excited by this. Um, it's a, a newer player to the diplomacy hobby. And seeing this level of high quality caliber play is really, really interesting. Um, so I, I'm, I'm watching Turkey. I think that other powers have more dots on the board. You know, they've got more units. But I love this position. No threat to her at all uh, in the short term and probably the long term. Siobhan? I think despite the fact that Germany has the most dots on the board, they're a bit awkwardly placed. And if I were to take over a position right now, I would take the Austrian. Oh, really? How I think I think there's a lot of really interesting play here. I think that we've got an AT that will eventually, when Russia commits north, be very, very strong. And possibly the Austrian just has the jump on the dots. Oh, interesting. And uh, no votes for France here, huh? I think France has a great position. Um, it, it's just, it's a, a classically strong French position. Um, and I think that Jake is in the conversation here, no matter what happens going forward, yeah. just because taking out England secures your long-term game. And if I'm Jake, I'm very, very, very excited about Italy getting pinned in place. Yeah. And also, I mean, Turkey and Austria being the ones to come out of the, the East feels like potentially really good for, for, uh, for, France, um, just because it, you know, there's a, there's a natural uh, counterbalance if you want it, if you can figure out how to play it right. Um, yeah, I mean, I think if if depending on how um, ambitious he is, he can actually start building and and shift south if he needs to, because mm -hmm. um, England's going to be going away real fast. Uh, I can tell you that Jake Trotta is nothing if not ambitious. So <laughs> he's a, he's a guy who thinks big and uh, likes to aim big. So he's definitely a go big or go home kind of player. Um, all right. And so with that, let us uh, stay. Oh, I forget where we ended. The, let's go in the West with Siobhan. Cause I see lots of black arrows over there and that always makes me happy. Uh, there's a lot of movement in the West this turn. Um, mm -hmm. France, Germany, and Russia continue. They're just brutal onslaught. Um, Allison, I'm so sorry. It's um, it's rough when this happens, and it happens to all of us from time to time. So, I mean, it 
I'm not sure I'm loving how Riaz is playing this in Germany, but maybe he's got a bigger plan. It does seem like Jake will be the winner in the West. And uh, over to you in the East, Doug. Um, I, I see, you know, the fleet in Turkey is making its way out there slowly but surely. Um, the, you know, Austria is into the Adriatic Sea, which gives a strong strategic position going forward. You know, at this point, Italy is in a real hard place, similar to Allison. I think that Russ is going to really struggle, and there's just not much I think he can do um, if he can't crack those alliances uh, and break them down. Uh, so. Italy is going to be out soon. What? Um, no, any worry about uh, Saren and Turkey playing it a little bit too slow here? Because it doesn't look like she's setting up to be able to take one of the Austrian dots here, unless it's unless she puts the fleet in Bulgaria, which seems relatively inefficient. Um, I mean, I, I would I would be making the conversation of, all right, this is great. We've got a strong alliance. I, I'm this has to be productive for me as well. But again, the, the level of patience is is there and there's no threat from Russia. So you can afford to be patient a little bit and sort of loan Austria a dot with the understanding that you're gonna get the next one. Um, the question is, does Richard, you know, sort of renege on that deal? Um, that's, that's your danger point. Um, so, you know, I might be saying it's time for me to take Bulgaria on the south coast because uh, it looks like you're going to get uh, Venice. Yeah, I, well, at some point we'll talk about Jackson's overall strategy here because it's uh, it's interesting. We've sort of been putting it off. Um, we, you know, we criticized the fleet, um, uh, the fleet build. So why don't we turn to that actually now and see how uh, see how it plays out in the context of the, the fall here. And Doug, we'll start with you. Um, Tell us about the, tell, let's start with Russia, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, um, my concern with what Jackson is doing, it looks like he's playing a good diplomatic game. Um, you know, England is going down. I, I don't see where his next focus is on getting more growth. Um, he doesn't have any strength in the South and he's sort of bouncing with Germany. If you're not going South, then and England's already out, then your next opponent has to be Germany. You're not going to wrap around and attack France. So I kind of feel like Ukraine and Romania aren't, aren't that terribly productive in this situation. So I'm a little concerned that, you know, he's opened himself up to Riaz, frankly, moving north against him. And uh, I'm sorry, what about the rest of the East here? Uh, you know, as as predicted, Venice fell and, uh, you know, Saren did take Bulgaria south coast. So it looks like it was a loner dot. Um, again, I'm, I'm this is just a hard situation for Russ in Italy. And, you know, you feel bad similar to Allison mm -hmm. um, because there's not much you can do from an out and out uh, attack on Austria. So I think that the AT here is really dri driving this game in the east. Yeah, if you're if two people in your theater are going to cooperate that much, um, there's just very little you can do. Yeah. Um, all right, Siobhan, tell us about the West here. The narrative remains much the same as it has these past few seasons. Allison loses another dot. Um, she will end with just the one in Edinburgh, um, which will be interesting to see if she manages to pirate herself out to one player or another. I always love to see a good pirate roaming the seas. Um, France drops down into the med to further Russ's problems and. Oh, he's oh, coming to the rescue, isn't he? Oh yeah. No, he's there to help. Rescue. I promise. Yeah, I, I came to the Mediterranean to help you. <laughs> that's right. All right. We've got uh, another, uh, fleet build from France, which, uh, <laughs> you know, I, boy, that really is nice for Germany. If you're Germany, you got to feel really good about seeing that, um, and you know, there's a, an army that's off in Piedmont. Obviously, it could be turned against you. This France. One of the thing, nice things about France's uh, overall tactical positions in general is that they can easily be shifted in different directions. Boy, um, do you get? I mean, do you, tell tell me. I really would be tempted in this position to to stab France if I was Germany. I could probably walk to Burgundy, um, and I can certainly take Belgium. I mean, and if you're not fighting Russia, what are you doing as Germany? Uh, boy, that's tempting. Oh, I'm absolutely doing it, especially because Riaz in Germany has probably made it so that he's the one who gets to take Edinburgh. So have France support you into Edinburgh while taking Belgium, while walking into Burgundy. 
That's I mean, mean, and I love no. it. And you know, chef's kiss, <laughs> chef's kiss love it. You guys are terrible people. I just want you to know that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm with you, man. It's got to be one or the other. Germany's either got to go after France or Russia here. And Russia is, um, with these two fleets up here, not really that well positioned to come after you. You know, they could finagle things so that they end up taking Sweden and then, then your position would collapse. But if they're willing to go against France with you, why not? Um, it could be so, fun. Yeah. And Saren drops the fleet as expected. And Russ is... Uh, is <laughs> Um, is, yeah, is yeah. sending French uh, instruction, French language instruction to the Tunisians, I think. I, I want to give, you know, Russ some credit. I mean, this is a good poll um, and he is going to make it as painful as possible for Austria to take those last two dots on the boot. Um, that's what you got to do in this situation. And I respect that kind of hard defense. Um, nicely done. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see how it plays out. Uh, let's start in the East, including, uh, Italy with you, Doug. Um, the, yeah, yeah. I, I, sorry, I was immediately drawn to Munich to Tyrolia. Sorry. That just like, <laughs> boom, yeah. popped right there. Um, you know, they got into the Ionian Sea. I think that's really the story. You've got a huge combat going in the Italian peninsula. Turkey is into the Ionian Sea. Great position for whatever she might want to do uh, going forward, whether that's take Greece, start convoys, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, but the, the, the thing is, maybe they were a little too slow because, uh, you know, France just took Tunis. Yeah. And has three now three fleets in the in the med Mediterranean basin. Uh, what do you make of Warsaw to Galicia? Um, maybe it's defensive. Maybe France. Uh, maybe Russia really is going to work with Germany for the long term, and um, they're going to try and push south together. That could that could potentially work. And Siobhan, what do you make of? Let's let's uh, hear about the West, but please tell me. Start start with Norwegian to Barents. I'm not sure I have words. I it you made the choice to build Fleet North Coast very early in this game and yeah. pulling it back willingly confuses me a lot. Um was there not a plan? Did someone change something on you? I I'm really actually incredibly confused by Norwegian to Barents. Uh, uh, Siobhan, would you try and arrange a like a dislodge you know germany's got two fleets there in the fall he could dislodge the fleet then you could rebuild it back home as something more useful Wouldn't well you yeah I, absolutely is hey can you guys just get rid of this fleet for me i'll build as an army so i can go after austria this is better for everyone i had a different plan in winter of 01 and now i'm realizing that i want to do something different um so i think you're spot on there doug um, just real quick, uh, Riaz did not take our advice, did not stab France. I'm very disappointed. Riaz, we will talk about this later. <laughs> um, but he does seem to have found a friend in Russia, and they're going to push south against Austria together. So France, Jake and France is trusting enough to pull his units completely yeah. away from Germany. That's and a startling amount of trust between France and Germany, isn't it? Yeah. I don't find Jake to be that trusting of a player usually, yeah. so this is confusing to me. That's, uh, Riaz, I, I, Riaz is a really good diplomat. Um, I've played with him. He's very charming and positive, and you know, they may just be working well together. All right, I, Riaz is getting a build here, no matter what, and uh, so is France. And uh, I, this, the France move to the North Atlantic is uh, really interesting to me. That kind of stands out here. Um, like, what's that? What is that fleet going to do long term? What is it getting in position to do? I mean, maybe they didn't think they had the units to kick out the Russian fleet. They didn't know that he was going to pull it back. And so NAO and North Sea were planning to do it in the fall. That's all yeah, I can maybe. think. I don't know. It, it could be a defensive situation. Um, yeah, let's set up a bounce in the Norwegian Sea kind of a deal up there. Yeah. All right, let's find out. Uh, what we have is, uh, let's say in the West with you, Siobhan, and I see uh, what may have been uh, some taking of advice here. <laughs> okay, so Riaz, I'm very glad you're listening to me from the future <laughs> and do that do that more often. Um, I, I love a good move to Clyde. Not sure I love the self-bounce there. Um, Jake seems to have sniffed out a little bit of this stab, um, but he loses Belgium. Burgundy Falls, Tyrolia goes to Piedmont. 
Wow. Okay, with, thank with support from from the Austrian. With support uh, from the Austrian. So the Russian is attacking the Austrian. Oh, not by the, I'm sorry, I'm jumping into another territory. Duh. No, that's okay. I mean, the, the, this is always challenging because the dynamics are crossing all over the board from the east and the west and on both sides of the stalemate line. Um, but you're, you're absolutely right, Siobhan. I mean, Russia at the same time is attacking uh, Austria, as did Turkey, um, although that may have been arranged. It's hard to know. Um, but it doesn't feel like it would be arranged there. It was an optimistic uh, set of moves by Saren here, wasn't it? To think that yeah. uh, she would get to keep Ionian and take Greece. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that it's it's really interesting. Uh, the one thing I would love to have seen Riaz do in this situation is make the move to Munich without going to Belgium right now. Because if France is moving back to Belgium, you let them, that way you get Belgium and Paris guaranteed. Now he's only gonna get one of them. So just a little tactical observation. But he, but he gets Belgium in this case. So he keeps France from building and gets a second build himself. Isn't that more important? That's, I think that's why we wanted to see it in the spring. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, in any case, uh, this is the position going into builds. Uh, I this looks awfully good for Germany at the moment, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm going to take back my earlier statement where I didn't feel like he was in a great position despite having the most units on the board. Um, if I had to step into a power, it would definitely be Germany. And that that pullback to the Barents now looks even better for Riaz, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. I, I... The alliance is not, you know, this Russia-Germany alliance is very rare, but it's very powerful when they can make it work. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot of fun to play. It's just very, very infrequent that you get people that will do it. Um, but, you know, they've got a nice uh, opportunity here going forward. So here's how the builds play out. Uh, thank you for playing, Allison. This was a rough game, and I, it's unlikely there was anything you could have done here. Um, you had, uh, yeah, two top players who decided to take you out, and a third player uh, we don't know enough about. Jackson may end up being a top player, for all we know. Um, but with no one willing to help you and, and two good players uh, looking working in lockstep against you, there was, it was just a matter of time. Um, we have, so Germany, this is, this is when things, the decisions become more difficult for Germany. And uh, Riaz has decided to throw another fleet up here, which probably helps him uh, parry a potential stab from, uh, from Russia better. But he's going to be guaranteed English Channel here. He's got fantastic position, um, in, although he's got some guesses in order to get further. Um, but, uh, or maybe he supports himself to Picardy. I don't know. We'll find out. In the East, uh, Russia with a very potentially tasty build here. Uh, this, is, this is a devilish build. Because if it were a fleet, clearly anti-Turkish. If it were army Warsaw, ambiguous actually between uh, messing with Germany and being anti-Austrian, you could make a good argument if you're Russia that you needed this to continue the assault against Austria. The army Sevastopol says, I want to keep the option open of moving against Turkey, but I don't want Turkey to think that necessarily. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good play. Uh, let's give full marks here. I mean, it's very yeah. flexible and it's uh, and a nice uh, obfuscation of what might be happening there. Um, I think that Saren is going to probably, you know, pull Aegean to Khan and then move east to Aegean to parry that. Um, and that way, if you need to go into the Black Sea, you can. I would give up that position in the Ionian. Um, to make nicey nice with everybody around me. Mm. Um, yeah, you got to figure France is going to want to pull back, and uh, maybe maybe this is how Italy does it, right? This is how Italy gets back in it. <laughs> Russ, it's, it's you still possible. have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, Russ. <laughs> All right. Well, so uh, France certainly doesn't pull back here. Um, some lots of other stuff happens. Wow. Let's start in the in the West with all the black arrows, Siobhan. Okay. Um, oh, Riaz, you listened to my advice and then just pulled everything right oh, back. Oh, wow. Good Lord. Um, that was surprising. I, you know, I saw in the comments earlier that someone was saying that Jake Trotta is also very charming. And so it's possible that Jake and Riaz are just out charming each other into, oh, no, I'm going to do this. No, you won't. And a little bit of mind control is happening. Um, Jake does pull up into the Norwegian. We'll see exactly what that means. But it looks like Riaz is setting up to take Liverpool. This or is at a... least try. But oh, I'm so confused. Are 
What a startling, I'm sorry, this is a startling set of moves from, from both France and Germany, but uh, particularly Germany. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit at a loss for words, especially on Germany's part, a little bit on France's, but I get it. I, what happened in this negotiation? Okay, let's put aside for the moment the question of whether Riaz is right to be pulling away here. Um, first, let's uh, let's find out what happens in the East, Doug, because uh, there is some really significant activity here. Yeah, I mean, the I think the story to tell here is that obfuscating army build did drop to Armenia and has a guarantee in Ankara, um, which then, you know, Jackson can follow up with another fleet. Um, in the meantime... Italy might potentially get back into this game a little bit, but most likely it's just going to be a dot farm for uh, France the rest of the way. Um, France has got a really strong position in the Mediterranean, and with Germany backing off, no reason not to continue going. Um, boy, um, we're going we're gonna to see Austria go down pretty quick because Turkey's sticking with it. Uh, yeah, I just have to wonder if you're if you're Germany, why you would want to be harming Austria here, uh, as it looks like. Maybe he's coming in to help set up, but I, I just don't think Russia was on the verge of exploding here. Um, maybe, and maybe I'm wrong about that. Let's uh, let's sorry. Go yeah, ahead. no, I was going to say. I mean, maybe, maybe they're going to help uh, Austria. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I let's 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 see the moves. We'll talk about this uh, after these moves and. Um, uh, Doug, why don't uh, why don't we stay with you in the east here? Yeah, um, as we as I mentioned before, you definitely have that Russian attack into Ankara, which is going to take away the build in Greece. Um, this is a really tough spot now for Turkey, um, and at the same time, you know Austria is losing units to Germany at the same time. Um, potentially uh, going forward. Not a lot of friends uh, for Richard at this point. Boy, this is a confusing board. It's it's really messy. Like pretty much everyone in the South is attacking everyone else at this moment in time. After such a kumbaya opening year. <laughs> right. We've got Germany attacking Austria. We've got Russia attacking Turkey. We've got uh, Austria attacking Italy, Turkey, and Russia at the same time. I mean, I guess if you're going to swing at everybody, you might as well just go after every single person around you. Um, wow. In, uh, in the meantime, I do, I want to call out our friend Russ here who moved to Apulia to set up to retake Venice. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he'll only have one unit uh, to do it with. Uh, Siobhan, so, uh, I mean, there's not a whole lot to say in the West. We get, uh, we get Germany getting Liverpool. Yeah, so all I can think here is that they have somehow made up, decided that France had one too many units, probably that army on the continent, and said, hey, Germany, you take Liverpool, put an army down in Berlin, we can go, we can both go east, you in the north, me in the south. That's the best I can think of what's happening here. It just feels like a better deal for Germany. Maybe I'm missing something, but... Uh... Oh, no, it's a better deal for Germany. I mean, aside from the fact that Germany there, stopped attacking France, and that's good for France. Yeah, I mean, the subtle move that I think I, I would also note, building off what you were saying, Siobhan, is the Denmark to Skagerrak move. Yep. It's a little hard to see with the arrow, but um, that that's an interesting move. Um, I think that is indicating an attack on Norway is imminent. Absolutely, I agree. All right, then, let us... Um, let us uh, let's leave this game for now. Let's get party time. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Italian Beef. This is uh, this was our board that uh, that looked just like a pool of sharks uh, at oh, the beginning. Yeah, poor Allison. Allison got taken out very quickly, but here we have Jake Trotta, Riaz, Russ Dennis, Saren Kwok, Richard Lowenberg. Uh, of those, four of them were in the top eight, and uh, Riaz, the one who was not, uh, is only because he didn't play last week. So uh, yeah. This is this was a board to behold. This was a board. Um, yes, if I, I recall correctly, I think I was in the west and Doug was in the east. That's right. This was everybody's attacking everybody else in the east. I remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So have yeah. fun with that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we had high hopes for Saren, uh, but she let the uh, she let herself get a little overextended, and uh, a Russian army came in behind her from from Jackson. 
Uh, and then let's see, Jake Trotta was um, right. Jake and Riaz took apart uh, Allison. But then this right, we expected Riaz to stab um, to stab Jake, and it looked like he did. And this it's, was he like moved for it and then pulled back and then pulled back. Um, so yep. this but was, this kept was the, Belgium out of the deal. And right. it looks like he's going to Yorkshire as well here. Um, Convoys to Yorkshire and takes Liverpool. This is when oh, we that's left. Right. Oh, and I, I think I recall when we left it, I was like, okay, this might have all actually been very much arranged. The decision that if the FG is going to continue, they need an army in Berlin or a fleet around the Baltic or something of that. And so that army, that French army on the English mainland is basically useless. All right, so let's uh, let's find out how it goes. And the, so France is not pulling here because they're up one, down one, but Germany is is definitely dropping a unit here. So, oh, and we also had right, we had the the fleet in uh, the French fleet in Norwegian, which you know seemed like it had a lot oh, of, a lot of right. a lot of things it could do, and also a lot of things it can't do. Uh, one of which is protect its home centers. Okay, so Germany's dropping, but France is even. Uh, France is no, even. Germany's Ger building. I'm dropping a unit. Germany's I meant putting putting one down. Drop, yeah. Dropping one down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that is an army Munich, which uh, doesn't feel very French. Not friendly. what I would have expected based on the crystal ball analysis I just tried to give. <laughs> but uh, we do. Yeah. Fleet Sev, here it comes, Saren. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, all right. So if this is the night of the, uh, the fleet Trieste, it's also the night of the Fran uh, Russian fleets because we have seen a lot of mm -hmm. them tonight. And uh, all right, let's keep going here in the east. Uh, Siobhan, we will talk about spring 1906 with you. Tell us what you said. Um, well, I'm actually in the west, but ah, I'll take sorry. That. no, it's fine, fine. Um, Germany doing some repositioning of fleets, dropping into London, going over to Clyde as France takes his fleet away. But not a ton else aside from Riaz taking Vienna, which is sort of an eastern thing. So I don't want to step on Doug's toes here. Oh, and France slips into Piedmont. And Doug, uh, now you can tell us about the East. Um, I love this move because uh, the convoy to Smyrna, you know, guessing right and holding an Ankara is a really well executed tactical series right here. And I just, that is great. And it's going to mm -hmm. net um, Russia a whole bunch of good stuff um out of the long term and i also i also think is we, you know we still are continuing the trend of everybody kind of attacking everybody else um there don't seem to be any hard and fast alliances here that are are really making anything work um it's everyone for themselves here all right let's keep going here we've got fall of 1906 and let's stay in the east with you doug well this is interesting um Jackson stops, um, takes Serbia, is going back to Rum, and and isn't prosecuting the attack on Turkey. So I would love to have been a fly on the wall um, and see how they got to that decision and why, um, because that's pretty pretty amazing. Would have, um, would, have, would have gotten Khan here, correct? Because it because uh, Bulgaria was supporting Smyrna into Greece. Yeah. So um, I guess you know nicely done by Saren um, as well. Maybe they just cut a deal. Um, well, obviously they cut a deal. Um, and this also is the first time Germany nets a dot out of this, but I don't think that this is going to end all that well for Germany over here because I can't imagine that Russia is not going to, you know, take this opportunity after making a deal with Turkey to pop that out. So this could shift the board dynamics if um, Russia can hold still with Turkey. So uh, Germany picks up two here. France also picks up two. Um and Austria goes down three. <laughs> Oops. Uh, <laughs> Siobhan, uh, tell us about the West. There is some interesting stuff happening here. Um, there is some interesting stuff. The FG seems to continue, I'm going to say mildly strongly. Um, and I only say that because Germany's keeping a lot of units, like a, holding Clyde, um, when Clyde could have gone to Norwegian to be helpful for taking Norway next year, something like that. I. I, I, are we friends? How much do we trust each other as well as any diplomacy players can, I suppose? Well, it, it, this is, I mean, uh, Germany has, I think, foregone now the the chance at, uh, at the big board top with Russian centers in any case, because mm -hmm. 
with the France, French centers. I don't know if I think I said Russian. Uh, France is going to put down three units here. Um, they picked up two and they get a rebuild from the, the oh, pop unit. Oh, three Royal. from France. Yeah, that's brutal. They, uh, this this might play for both play pretty well for both of them at this point um, because Germany now. Has, you know, can go after Russia and drive in. It, this is a good deal for both of them to not fight at this time. Um, there's a lot of Russian centers that Germany can go grab. And Germany is at 12 now. Like you said, unlikely to hold on to Trieste and Vienna. So if if France were to get those, they could sort of close the gap. But, you know, like you said, Norway and St. Petersburg, and then there's a big soft underbelly here as well. Yeah, I mean, drop a drop the armies in Munich and Berlin, and, Berlin and just drive and east as fast as you possibly can. Yeah, and you've be. got Clyde to the Norwegian Sea, which locks up Norway. So you could potentially get three dots out of Russia yeah, as Germany right here. Yeah, Next. no, it's. I think if Rialz doesn't top this board, I'll be very, very shocked. Yeah, yeah. Now, now it's a question of how big and how much does he drive the other players down. But I just got France to worry about. Yeah. Um, all right. This is. Yeah, France with three builds here is problematic for Riaz, and uh, we'll see. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see what Riaz does. It's you know the tactics I think are the most interesting thing for him here, and oh wow, that was a actually triple bounce in the channel, which absolutely was arranged. Um, as predicted, he goes to the Norwegian, which means he'll get Norway in the fall, hmm. and that's a about it i'm uh in the east i'm in you know a lot of black arrows move in there um and it's ultimately going to do good things for russia i'm a little concerned about berlin not going to prussia that was just easy yeah. to I, I don't think you need to fight with france here um no you, know. you don't the, the the safety nets and it's let me see one two three four five six seven units have been tied up in bounces planned bounces and berlin goes to kiel for what uh, it looks like this looks to me like uh they have just agreed to that the end game state is is, yeah, is being, maybe is but riaz you should at least have gotten warsaw out of this deal too i am well, he, he still could um but yeah it looks I, like given when I see the game is ending. I mean, yeah, no, actually this can't. is, this is, this is just a flat out missed opportunity. Um, not yeah. with you guys, Riaz, Riaz should have by the end of this, uh, in yeah. uh, maybe even two years, uh, definitely three Warsaw, Moscow, St. Petersburg, Norway. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's four. That puts you at 16, you yeah. know? And at that point you're looking at like, can I grab Budapest? Can I you're grab over the line France? In, yeah. You're yeah. over the line in the South. I mean, you know, you got a real solo shot here. Yeah, you probably mm -hmm. don't get it because France is probably gonna, you know, stop you. Yeah. But go for it. They There's should. not a lot of cost. Yeah, they should be. Yeah, because once he does this, then he should lose Trieste um, and Vienna, unless he can, you know, get armies down here really quickly. But so what? You know, you've got these four. You secure all of these. You end up I mean, four, fourteen or fifteen. This seems like a least. very missed opportunity, like we're yeah. saying, and Riaz just being too careful and oh and it, oh my you don't even <laughs> what, okay. what tell us <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry I, I, we need to talk about hey great you took budapest but you let france walk in behind you yeah. guessing arranged because this is what everyone decided but you don't even take norway you don't even like i yeah this is uh i, I we're seeing and, the end of the game here i mean and this you let them eliminate the turkey which, which could be the only have reason for yep. this turn and lowered your score by almost four points. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. So, uh. <sighs> okay. See, I see Jake Trotta in the comments. A hundred percent agreed. That's fine. I just think Riaz was wrong. He's saying, okay. Jake is saying that Riaz couldn't play on Sunday. Um, Plus, he really valued the alliances. Now, that part is just flat out BS. <laughs> if, Riaz, if Riaz were playing on Sunday and wanted this board top, uh, oh, he absolutely here. would have taken it. And, you know, yeah. Riaz, he's got kids at home and things to do and life, which, you know, it's we can't just fly away from our families for a weekend and play this game. Yeah, this is a place where the top board actually does sort of warp the dynamic a bit because if a player knows they can't play on Sunday uh, right. in the top board, then they're, they're going to play differently than if they. 
Absolutely. But that, I mean, that's all the metagame there. Yep. Yep. And you know what going in, so you got to, you got to figure it out and play it, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, good job here. I mean, for whatever reason they elected to make that call. I mean, remember that's good work by Jake and Jackson to get Riaz to take that result. I mean, yep. let's not mm -hmm. underestimate how strong of a diplomatic full court press that would have been. Um, so, you know, nicely done by yep. those folks. I mean, because if you're someone like me, regardless of whether I can play the top board, I'm trying to angle for the highest score I can get and the best result I can get. Because that's, for me, like a little bit of a matter of pride and a little feather in my cap. And yeah. Plus, if you if you got a solo shot, like, good God, take it. <laughs> I, every time. I, yeah. I wasted so many solo shots over the years before I thought that I should go for it. And and I have to say, on top of that, there's also the matter of the Invitational um, in the background here. So, you know, a solo here would net at least third place uh, unless there are solo, more solos on the other board. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, maybe it's fourth place, maybe fifth place. But this, that, that gets you significantly more points for the, for the Invitational ranking than, uh, you know, than uh, 13th or 14th place would. So, but, you know, yeah. we're all figuring this stuff out and that stuff matters more to some people than others. And... 2020 is insane. None of us know how to deal with it. <laughs> We're all doing great. You're all beautiful people. Love you all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Riaz's defense is eh, COVID. Eh, COVID. <laughs> That's what I've been saying since April. So all right. So Jake Trotta was in third place with 41 <laughs> points. He picks up 27 here. That takes him to 68. Uh, that will most likely be good enough for the top board. Um, we were projecting the cut line at 50, around 55 coming in, and uh, I've gotten a little back channel information that that is we that is looking like roughly where it's going to end up, depending on what happens on board four, on board seven. So, congrats to Jake. We think you have qualified for the top board. We will find out in a little bit, and uh, let's move on over to board number two.